Hello, and welcome to OpenGL Oversimplified, the series where I explain components of OpenGL in a very broad strokes manner. Title of this video is The Computer is a Business. Imagine a business. It has a whole bunch of different departments and they have their own work to do and they send messages to each other. In this model of the computer being a business, we could imagine that the the machine itself, the CPU and the RAM and that stuff is sort of like head office and head office has an arts department. That's the graphics card. I'm going to use this analogy to explain sort of three levels of OpenGL, three stages. We're going to start at legacy stage. Then we're going to look at pretty much modern or core OpenGL. And then we're going to look at sort of performance features and moving into the next generation of graphics technology. So let's look at legacy OpenGL. How would this work? Well, in this analogy, the department knows that they want to build a triangle. So the manager gets in a car and drives to the art department and says, start building a triangle. Then the manager comes back to the department and gets the vertex for the, the first corner of the triangle and takes that with him and goes and, and tells the art department, okay, draw this vertex. And the art department says, okay, we've, we've remembered this. We've written this down. We're going to draw this vertex. So the manager comes back, gets the next vertex and then drives back and says, here's the next vertex. And the art department says, okay, we've got the next vertex. And the manager keeps doing this until they come back to the department and the department says, we've got no more vertices to draw, we are good. So the manager goes back to the art department and says, okay, you're good, you can start drawing now. And the art department says, yes, we can start drawing now. And they do their thing. And then the manager comes back to the department. Now, this is sort of a, a very intuitive way of working. We draw something. How do we draw it? We s draw it one point at a time. We send in the three points for the triangle. One, two, three. And then we say, draw it. And that's when the graphics card draws it. The problem is, while the manager has been driving to and from the art department to deliver messages, what have the workers been doing? Well, pretty much nothing. They've been playing solitaire or something. You know what I mean? So... This is an issue. This is an issue. There's too much time wasted. But ironically, this is called immediate mode. Why is it immediate mode? It's immediate mode because everything sort of stops while these messages are being passed to and from, right? The manager is very immediate. The manager is very busy running to and fro. Um, so that's why it's called immediate mode. It's, it's very uh, tricky. So we'll know that we're using immediate mode if you're looking at any code and it says sort of GL begin. If you see GL begin and GL end run, <laughs> it's old code. And although the concepts of OpenGL are good and persist, some of the concepts of the legacy code they just don't translate all that well into modern OpenGL. So this is just sort of a historical look back through time. It's something to be wary of. Okay, so how does quote unquote modern OpenGL work? Well, remember the computer is a business. How does a business work? It'll have an initial meeting where they work out what resources, what um, assets they want the art department to use. In other words, what paints, canvases, brush types, and everything. They work that out. They get all of that information. They do initial sketches and things. They get all the data. And then they send that data to the art department in courier vans, in big shipments, all at once. Okay? So, to bring that back to the OpenGL analogy, I like to think of meshes and textures as two major asset types. So let's say we take a mesh and we put the mesh in a crate and we put it in our courier van and we send it to the graphics card. We send it to the art department. The art department, on the other hand, they get the resource and they need to store it somewhere. So they put it in a cabinet, a sort of cabinet. And then 
Well, when the resource was sent, there was a little delivery form which said, yep, sign that you've received this. They go, yep, they sign. And then there's a little form that says, by the way, which cabinet did you put this in? Just so that we know later on. So they'll say, okay, yep, this was cabinet number three. Now, we have meshes and materials, and those are different cabinet types. So let's say we start with nothing. The art department is empty and then 10 courier vans come in and each of the 10 courier vans has a mesh. So then the mesh cabinets will have filled cabinet number zero, cabinet number one, all the way up to cabinet number nine. But then when we get another courier van with a texture, well, that's a different type of cabinet. So um, on the delivery form, we would write zero because we're getting that first texture, we'll put it in cabinet number zero, and so on. So the art department has these storage cabinets with the various resources, and the head office has been told from the delivery forms which, um, which cabinet each of the things is in. So then the... Uh, uh, then the head office only needs to tell the art department, okay, you're going to draw something, you're going to work with material number three, mesh number six or something. And in the graphics card, the art department gets those ready to go and works with them. There's a little bit more involved in this. I'm actually going to talk more about it later, but that is the most important bit to understand. So this way of working with things... Uh, with the using the indices, the numbers, unsigned integers to represent the resources is called core mode. Because when OpenGL was being developed, people said, hey, we've got immediate mode. Turns out it's not so good. Uh, we're going to switch over to this other mode going forward. And this is going to be our core development is in this style. So it's called core mode. And then to bring it back to the analogy, whereas in immediate mode, the manager is very immediate running back and forth and everyone else is just playing solitaire. In core mode, the office, the head office is free to do whatever it wants after that message has been sent. So that sort of ties it together. OpenGL core mode is pretty good, but there are two major issues. Issue number one, we're only sending small messages, but sending a message to the art department from head office still takes time. And issue number two is when the art department gets some work from the head office, it does its best to get that work done, but it can't really plan ahead because it doesn't know if this is the only uh, bit of work it needs to do or if there are further jobs down the line. So. I won't go too in detail on this, but modern OpenGL techniques sort of focus on two main things. Number one, reducing the number of messages that need to be sent in whatever way we can, batching the work together. So maybe instead of drawing a bunch of triangles, we'll make a model which has a bunch of triangles or even a bunch of different models all stuck together and send that information all at once with a draw command that will reduce the number of messages which is sent to do the same amount of work. And the second thing is sort of batching draw commands together into a list. So instead of sending, say we have 10 draw commands, instead of saying, do this, do this, do this, we send over, head office sends over a work schedule, which says, these are all the things which the art department needs to do. And the art department says, okay, great. That's our work schedule. We can take those jobs. Some of them can be reorganized to be more optimal. Some of them will have to be in a sort of rough order. But because the art department knows the work schedule ahead of time, it can complete it as efficiently as possible. So anyway, that's it. Like I said, it's not a perfect analogy, but I hope it's enough for you to get started. In future videos, I'll be drilling down into more of these concepts and explaining them in more detail. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, link to the Discord server is down below if you want to join, give any feedback. And yeah, I'll see you again soon. All right, have a good one.